Yesterday, I got a chance to sit down with a good friend of mine, Sally Fu, who just finished the Mega Hopper course. And uh, I got a chance to interview him, so I'm going to be posting the entire conversation here. It's quite long, but I want to leave it as complete as possible for those of you out there that enjoy this kind of uh, conversation and are interested in ultra distance cycling. So the Mega Hopper, for those of you out there who don't know, is a course that was crafted up by Miguel Crawford. And he's the organizer behind the Grasshopper Adventure Series here in Northern California. And over the pandemic, he decided to create a route that would include many of the routes of the Grasshopper Adventure Series into one giant ride, which turned out to be 400 miles and over 40,000 feet of climbing. Now Sally decided to do it his own way and start from his house and finish at his house. So his loop turned out to be uh, over 450 miles and over 45,000 feet of climbing. So today we're going to share this video with all of you and I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get into this conversation with the legend, the one and only Salifu Mohamed Alaji the artist. It took him out. When he flipped over. Oh yeah. And then uh, I get thrown out of the bike like uh -huh. thrown out. Audio test, oh, test, man. test. All right. I think we're being recorded, Sally. Cool. All right. It's a uh, sweet stuff. Yeah. So welcome to the uh, makeshift podcast room here <laughs> at the Henry Wildberry Studios. That's so cool. So, um, I was thinking what we'll do, just go for like a casual style. I had originally thought we'd do voiceover and then, yeah. you know, try to make it more concise sort of edit. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, let's just, let's yeah, just take the time. Yeah, you mean, know, people will watch free, it. Free flow, being in the element, just be who we are rather than trying to please people. You yeah. know me. Yeah. With my shenanigans. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, so. well, if you can ride a bike for, you know, 57 hours, you got time. Exactly. And <laughs> then, uh, I mean, where am I rushing to? To my grave? Mm -hmm. Is there waiting for me? I will put uh, do not disturb sign when I get there. Yeah. So that's all that I can. Yeah. Now, I did make up a little list of questions, but... Um, I'm just going to go by memory. You can use them and it's fine, yeah. but in between, you know. Yeah. So I was going to start off by um, first, I wanted to give a little background about how um, you and I met and got started in cycling. And what I, when I remember one of the stories I wanted to tell, I don't think many people actually will know this about you. So I wanted to share a quick story about you before. Just to get this, just to get this going. So, hey. do you mind if I yeah, share okay. a personal? Uh, go, go for it. Uh, right. uh, you know, <laughs> there's always different blocks that you know support each other to make the building right. Yeah. You take one, and the building comes crumbling. So, we can tell whatever story we want to tell, but without the without how it gets to be that story, it doesn't have any solid or valid meaning. So, I'm. Hey, I have all day, all night, and I know I have a, a nice, comfortable bed here. If I don't feel like going home, I'll just sleep here. So uh, that's definitely. my story, I and mean, I'm sticking to it. All right. So uh, when I when we first met, uh, we were we were living in Marin County. You're still living in Marin County, and uh, I was living down there at the time. <clears throat> and uh, we we started riding together, and then one day, this was before Strava mm -hmm. existed. And uh, one day, you know, we used a, you know, we used the, the only way we could measure our distance was with those, with those cycling computers. And, it is. and it was based on, you know, it wasn't GPS. It no, was, it wasn't GPS, but I know it was uh, that at that time, Cadence was at the top. Cadence was like the next new thing. Yeah. And then uh, how much Cadence you can put up you know, kind of indicates how fast you are from uh, 
you know, people going 55, 65, 85 to some people going 160, 170, uh, 80 mm -hmm. rep per minute, you know, kind of put how high your number is pretty much uh, says how fast you are. I think re remembering and then when you, you and I started, that pretty much was the uh, our basis of trying to uh, keep along with everybody. Yeah, if yeah. I remember correctly, that time you know this all this thing, you don't have any way of uh, knowing all this uh, new technology that is on top right now that makes you go so excited. Yeah, I don't even know if there were actually power meters. No, yet. there wasn't power meters. Yeah. It was cadence. It was cadence and heart rate. As Exactly. It was cadence and heart rate. You're yeah. right. Yeah. It was cadence, heart rate. And then later on, it came about, and even the cadence and heart rate, it was uh, around having uh, this cut device that tells you, it's a smaller device you put on top of your bike. It tells you your cadence, it reads your cadence, and mm -hmm. you can see it through yeah. that. Yeah, but you that, had a magnet on your crank. Exactly. And a magnet on your wheel. And the, Exactly, and, and a magnet on your uh, crank set. Yeah. And then yep. they, you make sure that they align. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> and then they had to link up, remember? Exactly. When they, you had to wait for the signal to connect. And there were batteries and all these little it, things. It was some weird yeah, stuff. It was, but it was, hey, it, it worked. Come, we, it, it, that, it did. Yeah. You know? So I remember, so you went out on a ride. And this was, I heard this from a friend of ours who knew you and said, he was telling me the story. And he said, yeah, yeah Sally went out on a ride. And I guess you, you went out and you did this big ride in Marin and you made it all the way home. And you uploaded, you like looked at the ride, you finished the ride and it said, I guess you didn't upload it because you didn't have anything to upload it to. But you finished the ride and it said you did 180 miles. Yes. I, and I, think, I don't was, remember, but probably something like you that. You just went out and just started riding and you never stopped. And this was when we first got started. Mm -hmm. This was when you first basically got started cycling. And I was pretty much riding for fun just because, you know, two things. Until then, I was painting and... Um, I will paint, and the next day I will kind of like feel really grumpy mm -hmm. because I just don't want to deal with people, you know. Mm. But when I discover that cycling was another way to spend my time without dealing with people and going about my business, uh, I think that was it. I just get on the bike and I'm just going, you know. And I don't know the name of the roads, but I know that. If I pick one road that I know will connect me to the other, the other road, I keep going. And sometimes I see cyclists and I start following them and then <laughs> have no idea by just following them until I find another one that I'm like, oh, this one is heading home and start following that person. And that's how it all started. Bonehead moves, uh, like I always say, you know, with uh, marbles and... Um, kind of wood chips in my head as brain just got me this far. Yeah. You know, never making any <laughs> sensible decisions. But seems <clears throat> like it's working. Well, it seemed like you had already at that time sort of been, you know, long distance riding was definitely something you were, you were already naturally gifted at doing. Because at that time, I, re I remember trying to finish, you know, my first century ride and feeling pretty torn up from that and then to hear that you went out and accidentally rode 180 miles i thought i kept thinking you didn't notice you were getting tired at some point or you know how do you not know you're riding 180 miles until you get home and you look at your computer you know i i i, I don't know it just blew me away and then i thought maybe you mistakenly read the computer wrong are you sure <laughs> you were actually doing 180 miles but now we know. I mean, I, 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 I like, uh, move, like, you push the, move the tape forward, or how, how, how do you say the term? Uh, push forward. Yeah. Like, uh, this ride, you just finished with me. There's no single day I know how many miles I ride. I even told you about it, because that doesn't matter to me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, w w w the, the beauty of it for me, uh, all 
the time was the fact that I have a device that tells me that this challenge is not easy. If you want to do it, how this is how it lays. And I have a structure of what my challenge looks like. And for me, that's what I'm looking to overcome. Distance, I can read distance as much as I want. Mm -hmm. After Fort Ross, how many times did I ask you that? Did we just finish Fort Ross? Mm -hmm. Because distance that to accomplish something, I think um, one of the ways I look at it is perseverance is, is absolute. Mm -hmm. in, in achieving your goals, mm -hmm. you know. So in between, you know, you just have to uh, 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 make it to the other end that you're looking at. But in between, you can have the what ifs have to go out of the door. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, from the beginning, and maybe also to the excitement. You know, when I realized that cycling was a sport that you can do and it is not only meant to go to farm and carry stuff and push it home or a means of transportation, I'm like, hey, guess what? You know, and, and, and one of my excitement was, uh, it, it is, I struggled for a while because I didn't know my way on how to ride from uh, Marine to Sonoma County. When I figured out how to download the routes and it takes me, see, for the last month and a half or two, this is where I am. It's like, Marine, the road are exhausted. Where am I going? I, I go and come and it's like, no, I'm going to Sonoma County. At least when I get there, I know I have to come home. Guess what? You either go home or you get stuck here and I will go home. And I love... You know, the adventure in between and all the uns uncertainties that you haven't prepared for that at, at the end of the day shows up and you find a way to overcome them. Yeah. So that leads me into this. Um, you know, I want to get into this, the grasshopper part and uh, ask you some questions about, you know, this ride and, you know, get into the details. But, but before I go into that, because I want to get some kind of general overview stuff, like why... You know, how many of these long distance multi-day rides have you actually done before you did this? And I'm not talking just about like, you know, you've done a lot of rides where you start at night and ride through the night into the mm -hmm. morning. But how many actual multi-day? None. This was your first one. This was my first one. Yeah. See, this was my me. first one. This is the hardest. To me, this has got to be the hard, one of the hardest 400 mile. I mean, there's probably harder ones. Of course, you could <laughs> stitch together a bunch of uh, rocky single track that's almost impossible to ride. But, but in terms of climbing per mile, and just just a volume of climbing per mile on this route, I feel like this was an incredibly challenging. This ride was to uh, take on. this was. Um... I mean, I don't want to be corny about it, but this is what I will say. This was uh, the most mentally uh, tasking. It's like you have, I have to constantly stay present. I have to constantly say, yeah, you know what? I have a rope tied on my waist and tied it to the head of a, to an elephant. I need to pull the elephant with me so over there um uh, there's no ease up it's like in africa we have a saying that when a lion is chasing you don't look back or don't give up if you give up you are either a, an early dinner breakfast or lunch so it's like you have to stay focused but in terms of uh, 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 ride-wise, I feel like it favored me because of the weather. And the weather was the element that is against me. Yet at the same time, the weather was the element that was in favor of me. The weather was cooler. And as you know me, I'm somebody who thrives in riding in cooler weather. And that could also explain the reason why most of my craziness happens in the night 
because I mm. can meditate. Uh, my my brain is cushioned to think and 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 focus in a cooler weather than in a warmer weather. So uh, mentally, I couldn't make any mistake. But physically, I feel like it was in my favor. Uh, so, uh, so do you think you're physically stronger than you are mentally, or do you think you're mentally stronger than your physical ability? I think physically, uh, I was mentally. I got to a point that my mental state was solid. Mm -hmm. So physically, my physical was not in a position to give up. I don't know how to explain that. Like if my mental uh, strength depreciated, my physical will just easily eroded. Mm -hmm. But because my mental state was solid, it's like you have a truck pulling a trailer. Mm -hmm. If the engine of the truck falls off, the trailer ain't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But if the engine is running, the truck will move and the trailer tags along. So my body was more of like a trailer because my, 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 my mind was still strong and like, yeah, it's hard, but I mm -hmm. can take that. And with that mindset, it kind of makes it easy going. And one of the inspiration or one of the things that inspires me is I always feel like the next climb is easier than the one I'm climbing now. I don't know if I can, ex uh, mm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you don't look ahead thinking, oh no, I have even a harder climb. No, I always climb. believe that there cannot be I another see. harder climb beyond what I'm doing now. Mm. So I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah. If this one goes down, the next one is also going down. Yeah. It's, it's hard to explain, but that was kind of my approach. Do you find after you've done the, the climb and then you, you kind of put that one, you behind. check it off your list, put it behind you, does it then make each thing Co feel easier and easier? Exactly. Okay. Like my, 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 um, like, uh, my approach to uh, like Sonoma single track. And as we, I told you, I said, if I can get over that, there's no other climb that will deter me from going through with this even though every climb is different but mm -hmm. in my own way i am building uh kind of in a box or in a circuit at the back of my mind that the hardest climb is what i'm doing right now what is next is not as hard as what i'm doing now so when i get to the next one i i roll forward that you know what this is not as hard as the one i'm doing before and the one that is after this is going to be easier than this even though if you <laughs> if you take the psychological part out it's the opposite but it's just i'm just uh i'm wired to find ways that re re retrospectively inspire and motivate me without seeing the 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 challenges or the difficulties of the challenges in front of me was there ever did you ever get any kind of physical like did you ever get any pains that started showing up or anything no really that... because the, the this is my approach you are only as limited as you allow yourself and you start feeling pain when you allow the mind to experience it. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, one of the, one of my biggest uh, gifts too. I am a big believer that if you don't experience pain, you won't appreciate comfort. So instead of thinking <laughs> about pain, I'm rather, oh, you know what? There's a big pie ahead of me. So I'm looking oh, yeah. forward to that. What I'm doing now is just a process to get to that uh, oh, yeah. reward. Yeah. Do that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, I because know exactly if I'm, what you're saying. Because if yeah. I'm suffocated on the pain, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. I will just say, you know what? Forget this. Mm -hmm. But for me now, it's like, you know what? I would rather have the pain now. And then when I'm chillaxing, then I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, for so sure. That's, the, yeah. that's that's one of the things that I apply when I'm doing some of these 
Yeah. Mighty dog stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I just find that amazing that, you know, for a lot of people start riding these longer and longer distance rides and they, as you start stacking the days after days, you know, injuries start to happen, happen. you know, ligaments or whatever, something gets injured yeah. and then you get this pain that just starts to be there the whole time. So you never experienced anything like now, that? No, so credit to Brennan to... Um, uh, and then and I did, Brennan is you want to make yeah mention who Brennan is so we know uh, Bre Bre Brennan Watts uh, is uh, um, he is the architect be behind me being able to get my bike from Mosaic Build so he the bike is built through him and then by then he was. Uh, Working with uh, above category now, he raced for them. He's really, really awesome individual. And then since then, the bike, I feel like building the bike, no matter what it costs, you know, it what it, it, the bike brought me so much more than just a bike. So having him alone is huge. So we talk about it and I told him that uh, bef during the process, when we started the process, that one of my goal is to do the Mega Hopper. But I don't think any of my bikes can handle the pressure of mm. Mega Hopper. Yeah. So it, it was in front of him and I both that this was one of the goals we want to accomplish. So we built the bike, I did few test rides, and then um, even I came out with a couple of days that uh, it turns out some of them he will be out of town. And then one day I just called him and I said, what do you think about, uh, I mean, that was, I think it was Thursday. And I said, guess what Thursday is? And he said, I have no idea. And I said, it's a profess, the first day. The same day Miguel put out the challenge. And mm -hmm. then uh, I don't think that day he was going to be around either first or Saturday. So I kind of play with dates and then I came out with the 15th. And then I talked to him and he said, oh, the 15th, 16th, 17th, he probably will be around, around, around Hillsburg riding with Ted King. And I said, okay. Grasshopper is on the 16th mm -hmm. and I really, because I started this whole process with you, if it wasn't because of you, I wouldn't have the bike pulled and the shape that it is and get myself in a position to do it. So I'm going to give it a shot. I will start the 15th and try and ride over the uh, Lake Sonoma race. Mm -hmm. That will be the day before the race, that would be Friday, so that it's 16 by the time the event is happening, I'm gone. And he said, you know, he'll be in town. And I said, perfect, it's a go. So when I talk, talk to him about it, and I said, any suggestion in terms of nutrition and all this, and, and then uh, he brought up uh, Joji bars and salt stick. Mm -hmm. They sponsor him, and then he gave me some and man, Brennan is awesome. I can't say enough about him in terms of like how much he 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 cared and made sure that if I'm out there in the element, I'm safe, food, clothing, and everything is really awesome. So he gave me this whole stick, mm -hmm. and he said I should try them. He explained to me when you sweat, you know, and, and this is what you lose. So it having this, you replace them. So. I carry a bunch of them with me and I'm eating them like candy. So like I can open one, they have a bunch of them inside and yeah, gouge you gave all. Me a, you gave me a little pack. Exactly. I probably still have it. So I personally, I did not even have a single muzzle twitch. Not a single or, muzzle not, twitch. Nothing. Wow. Oh man. And even not only that, I'm running Eagle, I think, is... Uh, SRAM Eagle? SRAM Eagle. Okay. Uh, what, what, what is it? 1052 the, on the back? I think 1052, 1050. 
either 1050 or 1052 uh -huh. and 46 in front yeah so 50 46 52 you're you know that's still a tough gear that, it, it, it is for i mean you ride that on a, a guy's ass alone mm -hmm. and you will feel it mm -hmm. but that's what I use, even as when we were going head into. Um, and you're carrying a lot of weight on your bike. Exactly. So, yeah. What exactly did you have on your bike, Sally? And I wanted. I've got some stories to talk about <laughs> during the night when we when I rode back. Well, actually, before we get to that, let's let's just define the course. I think probably a lot of people already know now. They watched mm -hmm. uh, Ted King's King. video on this, and uh, so they probably know. But from your perspective, tell me what the course was and how you approached it. So and then I can explain where I came into the picture because okay. I have a bunch of video footage of you out riding and it was all on the last day. But why don't you tell everyone like how you approached what the course was and how you approached it when you left and kind of also what was your goal to fin? How are you planning to finish it? Like, what did you have a goal or are you just going to get on your bike and start riding? Can I use the restroom first? Yeah. 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 You know, do you have to pause it? Or? Um, no, just go. Battery is good. Yeah, the batteries are good. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll grab those. Oh, I uh, hope. Oh, this, yeah, this fell down a little uh -oh. bit. There we oh, go. I pull it. Yeah, you got to be careful. This short, this cord's a little short. Uh, it's all right. Sorry, this is the, this is the uh, you know this is Henry Wildberry low budget <laughs> studio. So you know you get what you pay for when you come on this channel. We're not sponsored. This channel has no sponsors. <laughs> We are totally independent. This is independent cycling media. This is about as independent as it gets. So uh, not to brag or anything. Um, and all the money, all of the uh, AdSense revenue that I get from this YouTube channel, I donate it all to my local bicycle coalition. They are out there working day and night trying to get bike infrastructure. They're trying to help with um, bike advocacy training classes help people who are new to cycling get into cycling learn how to ride on the road learn how to share with cars it's it's not easy in the united states we're we're, we're probably ranked in the lowest of all western developed countries when it comes to bike infrastructure so they're doing whatever they can to help improve that so anyway welcome back oh yeah we got to put this on thank you got a mic up sally so yeah um so yeah, so tell me how you approached the ride. Well, first describe the course, and then how you, where you started, because the course is, you know, so, on ride with GPS. If anyone's interested, in yeah. Something. If anybody is interested in the course, uh, go to ride with GPS, and it's pretty much uh, uh, ten different individual grasshopper uh, that. Well, I would and say. What is a grasshopper? I know this is the very basic question. Yeah. Well, what is a grasshopper? Who grass, runs it? Grasshopper depends on how you look at it. But it's a cycling uh, program or adventure that is uh, with the vision of, uh, I mean, the founder and creator called Miguel. That, mm -hmm. Miguel you know, Crawford. Miguel Crawford. The, the that, mastermind. Bummer. The mastermind of, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. called Grasshopper. Mm -hmm. And then he put this rice up together, and it's right that you can have fun if you have the right state of mind. And you can be miserable if you have the bad state of mind or the wrong state of mind. Mm -hmm. So he put up this... Uh, he assembled some of the hardest uh, grasshopper uh, routes uh, called the Mega Hopper. That starts from Marine, Sonoma County, Napa, and then uh, Lake County. Lake County, and just bind them together. So you think about the topic. And it was really a joke, right? When he first put he, it out Exactly. There. He said initially, he said it was really a joke. Yeah. But... I think somebody... Te like, I think what happened was somebody in one of his grasshopper uh, rides, somebody posted on on his Instagram, they, they said that one of his rides was too easy. 
Wow. And damn. so, oh, you want to uh, challenge him? And, and Miguel okay. is like me. You don't challenge him. No. E- either that or you challenge him in silent. But if you challenge him in, 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 you know, in vocal or in sound, you are in big trouble. So he put up all uh, this, you know, one solid uh, mischievous package ride called the Mega Harper. So, and then uh, is, you know, probably if I can put it in one word, um, a one solid uh, ride uh, in the history of Northern California. Definitely. So, yeah. Okay. So your approach was. And so it is uh, the the mega hopper is designed to start from occidental, occidental and end in occidental. Right. And when I was uh, doing uh, my recon rise, anytime I ride and come towards uh, Sonoma County, I always find out that when I get to Occidental, it's almost like it, 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 it stopped. Everything kind of backtracking, but I couldn't, you know, figure that one out. But talking to Brennan about it, one day, I actually sent him the route. But right before I start again, he asked me to send him the route. And I sent him the route. And then he looked at it and he said, uh, the directions I was giving him is not right. And I said, I think it is. And he said that um, where I'm telling him it, it will start, it doesn't start that way. And he, and he tends to be, he ended up being right. And then he said to me that, okay, what if, if he, the same route, but he recalibrated, for me to start from my house that way when i'm riding i'm following the same route but i'll ride back to my house as i finish that way my computer will not have trouble Mm -hmm. and i thought that was genius Mm -hmm. you know by then he said to me that i will end up with 445 according to his calculation yeah and i said brennan you know me that's fine (laughs) so and, and that's how it started. And originally, my my uh, initial plan was to leave my house at uh, 10 p.m. on the 14th. That will be Thursday. And ride all night and come through here and ride all through Geysers. Mm-hmm. But then uh, on, on that evening, Brennan went out riding. It was rainy. It was windy. And then that was Thursday night. That was so Thursday you were gonna night. leave Thursday, Thursday night, night at yes. 10 p.m. at 10 from PM your house from my house and and take the route and ride through uh, Point Reyes, Point Reyes. Where, is where, uh, I, where I pick the route. Yes, okay. and then come through to Occidental mm-hmm. and then come through Old Cas. Down to Casadero, Dero, up uh, King Ridge, King's Ridge, and do Skags. Skags, and do Lake Sonoma, and go up Geysers, and then do all that route, and start coming towards your house, so that I can stay here, and then the right. next day, I'll start riding home. Right. So you were going to do this in two days. I was so going to do in, it initially. in two days. Initially, that wasn't guaranteed. I was just having a plan in such a way that... Um, uh, I have an extra and more time to play Got with it. than, you know, pushing it. Mm-hmm. So, but because of the rain, Brennan was concerned and the road will be slippery and there will be loose, you know, debris that I can get puncture. And he said, if I get flood, he will not be comfortable if I'm out there cold trying to fix my bike. Yeah. And again, you know, looking after me, it was hard decision for me to make. But I'm like, you know what? I will. And two day, the two days prior, I've been having migraine. I never told him. If oh. I had told him, 
he probably will say I should change the date, but because, and this is actually the first time I'm bringing this up. So I make sure that I did not bring out the migraine. Oh, yeah. Because he will not. Because you had the migraine, you had that rainstorm starting. Exactly. Yeah, you would have had, you had everything stacking Start against, against me. So, but when he was so concerned, I told him that, okay, Brennan, I will go and think about it and I will let you know. And he said to me, please get back to me at nine and let me know your plans and i said okay i will go since i was starting 10 i have two hours window to get some rest so i will try and sleep and then uh, I, I went home and then i cook i make sure i get enough food and i went to sleep and man i would i i, I couldn't be more thankful that he was there to help me make that decision because um, until then for me if I wasn't out on the road I never thought that I can even tackle the mega hopper I just have to be on the road and be making decisions on the road mm -hmm. but it happening has a lot to do with him making sure that you know I'm safe to start and I'm safe uh, on the bike so I went to sleep. I woke up midnight and I went to look outside. The rain stopped. The wind wasn't happening. Everything was dry. And I'm like, awesome. Because I told him that if I woke up midnight before midnight, I'll start midnight. And if I woke up midnight, I'll try to leave before 1 a.m. So <laughs> I tried to get myself together, make some breakfast. And by the time I leave, it's all right few minutes tonight so eight to one so i kind of leave like one so 1 a.m 1 a.m morning exactly so yeah. when i was leaving uh he asked me to make sure that i i, I text him and then because of um i mean satellite lapses or you know you know, sometimes you don't have cell when i'm yeah. texting him i should let him know i, I send him text at this time and I did that before I left, so it kind of <laughs> helped with the uh, Garmin Mini and Rich and all those things. It kind of worked perfectly. So my original plan was to leave 10, but with all this insight and with his um, input, I decided to leave mi uh, 1 a.m., which tends to be an awesome idea. And I rode, I came by then the 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 only thing i lost was riding with you that day because i was going to make a loop mm -hmm. and come back and ride with you but yeah. as things were in my favor you know you were so easy about it so yeah yeah we well i woke up flow. that morning and i you know you sent me a link to your to your tracker mm -hmm. so when i woke up that morning i immediately logged in to see where you were at and i saw that you weren't even in occidental yet because mm -hmm. you had to come through you had to go occidental Sometimes. willow creek yeah then loop back through duncan's mills go up old Kaz and down uh, yeah. to casadero and i look at your route and it was already i think six or something in the morning yeah you weren't and even occidental the... yet and so I thought, well, I don't know if his tracker is slow or if something happened. I think, yeah, it was a time that I would I'm going to wait and just see if I can find you yeah. first. And then you came in. I saw we, we finally we finally found each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, I was already I'd already decided that, OK, I'm going to hold off today and go with you on the final okay. leg as you wait, made your way around all the West Sonoma County or East Sonoma County, Lake County, Napa County and come back, I was going to jump in with you and then finish the ride. And I thought that would actually be good because I didn't know Brennan was going to okay. join you and I, for that leg or for the Lake Sonoma. Sonoma which I know he early. was going to come with me at some point, but the Lake Sonoma thing was such a surprise because I have been whining to him that, you know, that's the one spot I would like him to come through with me because of the the mental i feel like lake sonoma single track has defeated me way long before yeah but also uh, there's something about him that gives me comfort like he's such a calm brenner you will not know if there's a, a, a like a, a a a doubt in his mind so it does help me that calmness 
is oh man like is so even you can see bit, bit, with you on the last one we were coming down you know you can tell that if i'm alone because i feel like i just you know so he was a very very huge inst instrument or he was such an instrumental in me to be able to keep the wheels moving or to get them moving in a safer and in a, such an efficient way. So when I came back and then we did uh, the, I came through and then you saw me coming. Old Duncan Road because of the storm and then uh, Willow Creek was so soupy, falling trees, falling branches. It's like Old Duncan Road. I can't walk like 10 yards. Mm -hmm. I can ride like 10 yards without walking. So it all kind of helped delayed and then um, all cars too. But then I thought, you know, it was part of the process. You know, I can't allow myself to be absorbed in thinking about, you know. So those were part of the time that I'm like, you know what, you just have to enjoy the process. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Wow, you said so much, and I was like, I had all these uh, questions I was going to ask you in the middle of them all, but I didn't want to interrupt you. No, but you, you can you yeah. can ask. We can well, so back. when you got to, you finished Lake Sonoma, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, Brennan, you met up with Brennan. Mm -hmm. I know there was a little bit of uh, organization that, that you guys needed to do to get together so there. And when, then you left and when went up we, King Ridge. When we finish Lake Sonoma... Yeah, you finished Lake Sonoma, mm -hmm. which was the single track. Yeah. Then you got out to the Cloverdale. So we got out to, where... uh, after we finished Lake Sonoma, we were supposed to meet up with uh, Alisa Brennan's girlfriend. And then it happens that I, he, um, <laughs> she ran into Miguel. I think Miguel told her we were on our way, and she waited, waited, waited. Uh, I mean, it, it was tricky coming out, and then we came out late, but then she was gone. So we rode down to Cloverdale, and then we stopped to make sure that we find her. And it started getting really cold. Mm -hmm. And then by then, waiting and trying to get something to eat, we stopped at uh, this uh, mall, I don't know what, 7-Eleven, what the name is, but it is closer to... The convenience to, store. Like, exactly. The one, I, uh, the one where you called me and... Exactly. Yeah, okay. So by trying to get to figure out where Alisa was, if she was safe, how to get her, uh, and it was getting cold and it was getting dark, and uh, um, at some point... Um, so what mile are you at at this point? I was at mile 169 point. Eight point eight, eight. Okay. over eighteen thousand feet elevation yeah. at that point. Yeah, and you started at one a.m. and I started at so 1 you must have been really tired at this point. Well, no, I was actually fine, and uh, you, you have to understand that when it comes to cycling and me and night hours, I don't get tired. I get tired during daytime, but if the night time is setting in. I can go. Night owl, huh? Yeah. Wow. So I was planning to move ahead, mm -hmm. but thanks again to Brennan. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm mentioning his name so much, but you know, that guy is. It, 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 even though he didn't do the whole ride with me, he was uh, uh, like as important as me sitting on the bike. You know, if something was going wrong, uh, I, I either call him or call you. And then, uh, you know, and, and he checks in with me every couple of hours to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm moving. Do I need something? So, I mean, eh, he's awesome. That's, I mean, that's the best I can say. Mm -hmm. So I told him that uh, I, want, I, I want to ride uh further and then maybe you know put some money in and then come back and stay with you mm -hmm. and then he said to me that you know he's heard a lot about the descent after i, I decorated yeah. and you know he's not comfortable for me descending that in the night yeah. and 
you know, he would rather have me descending during daytime. He's already make one of the best decisions for me, even though I'm everything is kind of shifting. Yeah. And then uh, I yeah, when he when you called me from there, I was trying to read between the lines a little bit of your mm -hmm. conversation, mm -hmm. and I was getting the impression that that you were, for some reason, I was thinking, are you are you stopping? Are you giving up in Cloverdale? Is this over? Are you done? I wasn't sure because I was hearing you talking, and it was. It sounded like you were making, you were confused about what to do next. And I was like, oh, is Sally giving up on this ride? No, I wasn't giving up, but I rather I was trying to say, I was trying to like have, like re relate to him. I was trying to make sense of what is the right decision to make. Yeah. And the, the best part of it is he's all, he always put in front of me his concern and then say, you know, it's your decision to make. You know, and then uh, I just sat and say, no, you know what? It's cold anyway. I I would rather if I'm con if I continue right now. Number one, you are concerned with me with the descent, and if something happens, that means I'm jeopardizing your 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 your, your well being and my well being. So why don't I just find don't ask find somewhere, stay, get a warm shower, and I will continue daytime. And then uh, I rather have the descent during daytime done nine yeah yeah and the, descent, then, the descent in case anyone was trying to understand that so the ida clayton is a paved climb that goes up off of 128 highway 128 mm -hmm. just north of the town of saint helena mm -hmm. or calistoga basically yeah, calistoga. and off on the right you see mount saint helena and ida clayton kind of climbs up alongside it. of it and at the very top there's uh, some rollers and then yeah. there's a really steep twist even the rollers there's gravel. some kind of bad funky yeah. loose gravel in it's some like, it's, half it, it's it's wacko yeah it is it goes from sonoma county to napa county mm -hmm. and once you get or is it lake county actually yeah, it's lake county is it lake county okay yeah. so when you get to the top you hit this gravel descent and it's in some spots it's probably 16 so much step lines it's like like it is bumpy yeah. really yeah. hard and there's a lot of washboard but, and you know at nighttime when you're tired after doing 200 it, and some it, that, miles it work. it's a danger it's, it's a risky road to take i was so <laughs> grateful to the fact that um on my way here, you helped me. The first day, I pretty much have no idea what backpacking means. You know, helping me to strap it when I was coming through. So the next month, when I got to uh, Cloverdale and then took everything down to repack and get what I need to move in front if I need them and mm -hmm. have everything tightened up, yeah. help me to secure everything so that when I was doing that descent, if it was the first day, if I had gone uh, after Brennan said all that, that would have been a disaster. Like I've seen, I've realized how fortunate I was, like having you guys because. Yeah, yeah so like, this is your, this is, you know, not traditional bike packing in the sense of uh, you know carrying your sleeping bag and your tent no. and sleeping on the side of the road. You're you're kind of trying to do this ride uh, as you know as more like a like a randoneering event or a brevet as they would say, where you try to cover the whole thing as fast as you can without stopping as much as you know without stopping as much, mm -hmm. which meant you weren't going to bring a sleeping bag, you weren't going to bring you know tent a tent and cooking stuff you're you're just trying to carry enough things to get through all the different elements and maybe stay at a hotel so, if you need to and that's kind of your, but the your original point. plan staying in the hotel wasn't it the only no. plan was to stay at your house yeah. which will which if it wasn't which by the way no one the... don't call me and ask if you can stay at my <laughs> this, yeah, is, he, he, this he, is not an open door exactly uh, he's more like a brother so we have uh, yeah. uh, uh, our own yeah you know so it, it, it and it, it circumstances flip over and i have to make adjustment on the fly and uh, it turns out they were kind of tough adjustment but they were the best adjust adjustment i could ever wish mm -hmm. 
uh, to to made. We, yeah, you're just we going people, with we, the we involve, going with the flow. Going with the flow, making decisions as they come as they come, and you know, making trying to make good decisions so that you can actually finish this ride. Yeah. So. Um, so you so you stayed in Cloverdale. So we stayed in Cloverdale and then in the to morning, make sure that uh, we we know uh, the word about um, Alisa, and you know she's awesome. Like you you saw when she brought me tea. That was the only thing that woke me up on my night escapade. So there was no way I was going to say, ah, hey, you know, I'm doing mega hop. No, that. It, for me, the whole thing was like a family uh, track. So, you know, I, I felt uh, then good for stopping in Cloverdale to make sure that we all reassemble as I'm feeling right now. So yeah. we I stayed in Cloverdale and then the next morning, and it turns out that uh, it was going to rain and the rain never stopped until 8.30, 9, that's what they said. So I wake up and then, uh, you know, reconnected because Brendan and Alisa also stayed over there. Mm -hmm. So we reconnected and then uh, they came to see me off at the door of the hotel. And I thought the rain was stopped. And Brendan again was worried about me. So he gave me uh, uh, his uh, leg warmers. So I doubled up my leg warmers and he gave me his... Uh, uh, jacket so I wore the jacket so I ended up uh, wearing like four shirts with the four jacket shirts. I never leave, took the jacket off until I got to your house so as soon as I left before I when I uh, start the um, you know when you ride in and then you cross from uh, it's, it's it. okay yeah. yeah, it's fine. You, uh, I crossed from the uh, the freeway and then uh, embark on uh, uh, Geysers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the back it, side of Geysers. Yeah, it started pouring. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, snap. Mm -hmm. But there was <laughs> nothing in my mind that said, turn around. I'm like, no. rain or shine. Yep. And then before I leave, it, it was, was weird. weird. Brandon was good. He, he offered me another jacket. He said that one is more like keep me dry because the one he gave me he said after some time it will absorb water but it will keep me warm so what i did was bundle all up it's raining i, I was wet drenched but i'm riding in it so slowly but surely the rain subsided but then it started getting cold i still stayed in it until i get to the summit of gadget and when i was descending i just opened the jacket up that way it will, you know, buff up the water and dry it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was how the episode. Yeah. So the, then from there, you did the geysers. Uh, from there, did the geysers. Clayton. I did Ida Clayton. What was the hardest climb uh, of, this, of the, this whole journey? What, where, where did you get to where you were ready to give up? Was there ever a point when you were ready yes, to give up? The hardest climb for me was I the Clayton mm -hmm. and I never have a sense of it being made mention by Miguel in our previous conversation until I got there like when that they, one slipped through somehow huh yeah, you didn't notice it no either. I have no idea <laughs> I the, the last talk I had with him when I said okay I'm coming to write right through um Lake Sonoma before the event and he said no if you you run and I said Miguel I have this plan he said we have to talk and he called me and I said okay this is the plan I'm leaving the 10 uh PM of the 14th so by the 15th I'm riding through and the event is 16 so by the time you guys start I'm already long gone and he said and then you ride you ride and go up and ride through I declare right and I say yeah and I'm like why like he he mentioned that and then previous conversation he didn't mention that he kept and, mentioning Ida Clayton to you exactly in and my you're, mind you're like why are you keep making, talking about Ida exactly Clayton? it doesn't it did not make any sense to me that you know and I made him know that uh, uh, Lake Sonoma 
is my nemesis. But he never even bring that up. No. So during the ride after Lake Sonoma and Geysers, I hit this long stretch flat. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, few I know that rollers. That's a and then and then at some point it says I five miles to Adiclatin. And I'm like, okay. It, it, it all came back to me and I said, I will see what the adequating is all about. And on my Garmin, it gives you the profile of the climb. It's like from easiest is green, purple is like, yeah, somehow you are into it. And then like Indian red, it's like, oh boy. Uh -huh. I got to articulate him from the bottom to the top. It's all Indian red, and I'm like, oh yeah. shit! Yeah, <laughs> and, and I started, and I'm like, yeah, this cannot be harder than. You're like, this can't be right. There, there, there's something wrong with the garment. Oh, there there must be something and, wrong. And, and then I said to myself that this cannot be harder than Alex Sonoma. Yeah. Oh boy. It is. It yeah. made me appreciate and embrace Lake Sonoma more. And, and this yeah. is this is this is uh, um, the reason why Lake Sonoma keep eating me. Like for me, I always believe that uh, even though you know after Ted King's ride, it, it gave me different perspective and an appreciation to how you know this guy go about their business. When I was riding with Brennan, I think my average till we get to Lake Sonoma was about 14 point something. And I thought that wasn't bad. After Lake Sonoma, you know what my average was? Seven point something. Wow. It dropped to seven something? <laughs> exactly. Wow. So I don't care who you are, you can't make it up. So like, when I go to Adi Clayton, I'm riding, I sat on the saddle, you know, fine, you know, moving my gears to feel, to, to suit different, you know, gray. Mm -hmm. I got to a point, man, for the first time in my life, like I'm riding a bike, I'm thinking about get down and walk. And this is how it start. My back, like give up. Yeah. You know, I, I sit on the saddle and I have no power on my legs. So you so, did have, so your back did actually bother you then? Yeah, that, that particular spot, spot yes. yes. So mm -hmm. I have to get off the saddle and I start thinking how I, 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 I'm like, virtually I'm trying to absorb in how Teddy King was feeling when he was right here. No, I know he's he's good at what he's, he does, but he's Very. human. And I'm trying to get into it. I'm trying to tap his, in, into his mental capacity. Yeah. His, the, his, the discipline to, to like attain and to accept that kind of, to compose within that kind of pain. And after a while, and I'm like, okay, let's say I'm riding with Ted King right now. Like, you, the same thing you do. I, at some point, I felt like his hand is on my back and pushing me, and I'm like, no, I'm not getting off my bike. I'm riding on, I'm riding this. So what I adopt was to get off the saddle and then, you know, uh, step at it, go at it, go at it at some point, then I'll sit and give my back an ease and then get, if the back is responding, I get up and then pedal, pedal, pedal. So towards the last stop of it, that's what, you know, pushes me to the top. But then that was the only time I have problem with, with like physical problem, you know. Okay. So articulating was man that is hard and then in the middle of trying to configure how to you know get to the summit of it i ran into this guy in his truck driving down and he's like yeah you crazy crazy and i'm like yep yeah, i didn't sign up for normal because if i sign up for normal i wouldn't be here and as i'm getting out to the top this guy left his ring. He was coming uh, the other direction. And instead of driving to turn wide, this guy was turning into me, leaving his lane, driving a, a white Ford van. 
And I'm like, I have to stop, not so that I don't get hit. And like, I was like, uh, maybe a foot and a half or two foot away from the car oh, wow. on, on the hill. And I'm like, yeah, nowhere man, to nowhere to go. And, yeah. and, and that was some bizarre stuff. Yep. And after that, I decided descending. And as I'm descending, the whole descent, you know, I descended with Brennan. He was in my mind constantly with, you know, all the technicalities, like all the turbulence, like the bike. It was like heavy dancing, yeah. you know. And then I'm looking at my backpack and hoping that it didn't fall out. And that's where you come in. And I'm like, man, you know, this is like a big giant puzzle. And every puzzle have to play its role right for it to happen and you know when i, I get, get to, to the, the bottom, bottom and i start riding uh i still cannot get educated off my mind so mm. for me personally yeah i i have no idea how ted king did it but for some reason he helped me out big time to get over that you know yeah, so then after that descent, you end up, you, you take whatever that is, Highway 29, I think, yeah. over to Middletown, and then mm -hmm. you take, there's the road behind uh, Middletown that goes to Ink Grade. Do you remember the name of that road? I don't know. Uh, I know that. Like, turn left. Yeah, turn left, I, and then you get to Middletown, and then you, you go through town, and then you... Then I turn right on this 16 long stretch yes, mile at the a, back of yes. Napa. Yeah. Oh man, that is one, that is the longest mm -hmm. 60 miles. Yes. I, 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 there's actually a little climbing in there as well. Oh, towards the end of yeah. it, there's this mm -hmm. steep climbing. You have no idea that is coming. Yep. But it looks like it's going to be a flat road. Exactly, it's not. not. But, but like, like I, I told, told you before, before, my approach was one of the best tools I ever have. The next climb is always the easiest. Mm -hmm. So I don't have it that, oh boy, there's another climb. No. Even when you were riding with me, you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a superman, but I did, it didn't feel like I was worried about the next climb. I always... No, believe. you were still climbing strong. When that I was like, my approach, it. that the next climb, the climb before is harder than the next yeah. climb. And... If if you want to do this, you just have to have a, a certain kind of mental plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then you do you do Ink Grade, and then you drop into Calistoga. So you do Spring Mountain Road, which mm -hmm. is a really tough climb. Then you drop down into Santa Rosa, and then from there you work oh, your way. Oh, so talking about drop down to Santa yeah. Rosa, I was riding through Santa Rosa, and I ran. Uh, as, As I, was I was riding, riding and, and trying, trying to find my exit uh, towards you, right? I, I saw these two couples with their black lab on leash. I, I look at them, I, I mean, so, as somebody who works with dogs, I didn't feel like they were that responsible or paying attention to the dog. So and you're I, on the bike path, right? Uh, you're on the bike path or you're on the, side path? On, the, on the road. You're on a road. With okay. the pave on the side. Okay. So, so they're out walking their dog. And they are out walking With the one dog. of those retractable leashes. No, it's not retractable. It's no, just a long leash. Just a long leash. leash. Yes. Okay. And, no it's, what's it? no, it's just a long list. Okay. And then I read the body language. I, I observed that they, they weren't paying and attention. And you, by the way, in case anyone doesn't know, you work with dogs. This I'm, is I'm your kind of, this is your profession. This mm -hmm. is how you pay your bills. Yes, I, I, I'm a dog walker. And one of my, the things I cherish is like reading dogs' body language and also human beings, because that's how you avoid trouble. So I, I wouldn't say I'm a professional in that, but I'm But you have a good eye good. for dogs. You and know, then also reading read people's body language. Yeah. So, so I, I saw, saw the couples and I read the body language of the dog and I'm keeping my eyes on the dog very carefully. As soon as I am about to pass them, the dog lunge from the pavement straight to my right calf, and then uh, I was, because I already 
sense the situation. I barely into the road. Likely it was oh, Sunday, gosh. and then the road was quiet, oh, man. and then the couple they couldn't even look at me in the eye, and then they 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 pulled the leash shorter to have control of the guy, the dog, and then I rode into the wrong direction. You know, because of all that interaction, I have to ride back. So I rode back into them. And when I was coming back, they made sure that, yeah, the dog was not close to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was, uh, I mean, I that thought... That was a close call. Very, very close call. That yeah, would I mean, even if you didn't get bit, you could have ended up tangled up in that, that leash. And that would have taken you down and hit the pavement. That, that could have ruined the And world. how ironic would that have been? Like I know what are the oh, Sally what are who the walks dogs and go out to 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 face this challenge only to be stopped by, by a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even write that. Ah, the Sally come the, to stop by a no, dog. You, see, the reason you didn't do that is because you are a dog walker. Well, okay, and and you, then, uh, the dog, the dog uh, spirits are looking watch, after that's you. True. So, all right, so then you made it, you finally made it out of there. You got through Windsor, you did Sweetwater, which is kind of the last climb of the of that Good day. day. Mm -hmm. And then you made it here to my house. So, and my... when you, when you walked in, mm -hmm. I got to say this, because I remember this very well, because this plays into the rest of the ride. Okay, like but this, this is the, okay, well, this is, this is one thing, <laughs> like, I have ridden I know. Oh, 300 miles without any... Uh, uh, hang ups, uh, or really hang ups, any like mechanical no, problem. Your, your tracking system's working, your garments working, everything's working. And my right? first problem was after I climbed the first small climb of uh, uh, sweet water and mm -hmm. descended oh, yeah. to right. the first, we gotta bridge, talk about this. My Driller battery died. Make sure we say this on like <laughs> August rec on record for everyone out there, all the electronic shifter people. Yeah, that my, swear by it. Exactly. What happened to your shifter? <laughs> my driller, red driller battery died, oh, and I'm like, oh. oh boy. But fortunately for me, <laughs> um, before I leave, Brennan made sure that the battery can die, so he advised that I bring extra battery Definitely. for both the driller and then the shifters. Yep. And then, so uh, your uh, shifters have the little batteries inside them? Yes, the then... ones that can go through your heart rate monitor. So uh -huh. I brought two of them and I brought one of the shifter batteries. Fortunately for me, my drive train only needs one so they yeah, have a one by so you only yes. need one battery yeah what how long do those batteries normally last i have no idea they can last fairly a long that's time that's what i heard but and you just got this bike yes but the grueling did you charge up the batteries? yes okay. i mean that's interesting the first day i rode 170 miles over eight eighteen thousand feet yeah. the battery and I'm yeah. ra remember I'm running a, 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 a yeah. 46, so there's a lot of there's beep, a lot beep, of beep. shifting. Exactly, and that's the thing that I've been. Well, we'll get. This is a separate topic, but these electronic shifters, my the batteries do. I've heard all they will thing, last, last forever when last you don't forever. shift. When you don't shift, I have the. Ah! We're being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a di two di is it di two Shimano di two yeah. on my back. They can last for a long time. Yeah, Not for that's me. That's what I hear. Not for me. Okay. Because you can imagine, like, one week I have about... They work great on in Florida, uh, where you don't Not shift. even that. They work great when you wake up every day and ride 20 miles or ride an hour and a half, two hours. How great can they work when you pound 12 hours on one ride? Yeah. So there's pros and cons, Yeah. you know. My advice is always have a backup, and yeah, Brennan taught definitely. me that do not. And he gave me all these tips on, you know, if this yeah. happened, this is how you go. This happened, that's how you go. So my first mechanical happens with the battery died. So the first thing I did was to call him just in case I, I, I need a go through to help me. Then I called you to let you know that I'm, I'm at uh, yeah, you're uh, a little late. Sweetwater yeah, because I saw your dot. 
on uh, the tracker, and I noticed you were stuck in one spot. Yeah, so and I was like, "Uh oh, what's li- going on?" <laughs> Likely, I had uh, I put the dr- red driller battery on, and it started working. So, Perfect. fortunately for me, it was something I could fix. So yeah. it was really blessing. Yeah. And after that, because yeah. you I, weren't even at the start yet of the steep part. No, oh no, yeah. and that. And what gear were you in when that happened? Oh, the big one. <laughs> you were in the big gear? I was all in the big ones because after the first climb, I was descending. descending. So oh. what, what else you can I do? You walking the whole way up. <laughs> it, oh, that's man. why I said that it, it, yeah. it's a puzzle and every puzzle have to fit right. And yeah. if I didn't have all the people that I have on this And I'm project. sure that the experienced bike packers carry multiple spare batteries with them. It's not like they go out and do these adventures with just one battery pack. But you see, people, uh, people who are, uh, uh, but this is your first time doing know. this, so you know you're you're learning a little bit as you go here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get that taken care of, you get it here, and then you walk in, and I say, Sally. I know you're tired. I know yeah. you've been riding light. And I should have asked you a couple of times. But I said, hey, do you need, is there anything you need to charge up? And, you, and I don't remember what you said. You said, yes, yeah. Yeah. but then you didn't get what, out what you needed. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to pester you and be bother you. <laughs> you but should you, have. Next I time should have. You should have. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're tired and all that. So anyway, the next day we get up and uh, we get on the road and we get, you know, we go through, I don't know, we were at mile, what, 80 or something. And I brought, well, first, before we leave, you said you went to go plug in your Garmin into your, to your auxiliary battery pack. And your auxiliary battery pack was dead at this so point. So this is the day I turned my Garmin on first. You turned uh, your Garmin on. Because when, when I never turned my Garmin off, but it goes to sleep by itself after sitting there. Okay. You know, the reason why I don't turn it off is so that... You had the whole ride linked exactly. together. Yeah, that so makes I, sense. So I, I push it to turn on. Yep. And, and then the battery the, says it died. needs to be charged. And then So I, then you're like, no problem. I'll get my spare battery pack out, which you had the auxiliary yeah. battery. And then you went to plug it in and, and what? It was dead. Dead. So then I said, well, I have a I have an auxiliary battery pack that's fully charged. I'll let you borrow it to charge up your Garmin so that we can get going. Because there's no way we have time to charge that thing up. So, yeah. So we headed out. And then by, well, we were at. Uh, you stay rest from that game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can take a break. I'm actually going to grab a. I'm actually going to try some of this. Sally brought over some exactly. so acai. Our battery problem. Th- this is some. Ant- this is what Sally brought over with him for this interview. So um, he's not sponsored. I'm not either sponsored. But anyway, it's an acai beverage. So we're gonna we're gonna try some of this. Um, I'm gonna take this tea bag out. Yeah. Also, the other thing that Sally brought with him, I've never seen. Uh, he brought over this jar of peanuts. Do you want some of these peanuts, Sally? Okay, yeah, we're gonna have some acai. Sorry, man. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I wonder how many people will actually watch <laughs> this. Oh, yeah, thing. people will because, oh, man. because people are so interested yeah. in, in. Hey, let's I mean, you want some, uh, some of this here. Yeah, sure. This is. Uh, did you where, where shake did you? I did. Okay. Oh, man. A little this bit. Is... All right. That is good. Here's some bowl we can throw these peanuts in. What's Miss Cool? Ah, oh, she's hiding. That's good. Oh my god! Yeah. So <clears throat> Sally just poured some uh, some peanuts. peanuts here. Oh man. Oh, those are good. Mmm. My favorite peanut. My middle name should be Peanut. It should be. Sally. They made a whole cartoon series. The Peanuts. Peanuts. Muhammad. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's do the final day here. And we can take this, wrap up this. Uh... So I came and they tried to unplug in my battery and the battery is dead. And mm-hmm. you said I can use... I said, you know, I have an auxiliary battery, but in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to, I have my phone charged up. 
you know, I can just record the ride from my end and I'll have an auxiliary battery because I know on these long rides that, you know, your batteries are going to die. Especially if you're recording. I'm trying to take, I wanted to take video footage of you. I wanted to take some photographs as well. So I knew I was going to use up some power, but your batteries were dead. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I love eating peanuts when you're in a conversation. You get one suck right in your throat. So I knew that there was going to be so need for more power than a normal normal ride so i uh i offered my battery pack but i figured well you'll charge up your garment so you at least have that running and then i will get it back and i'll keep my phone charged so i can get some photographs and other things anyway so we get all the way we we, we, we leave here we do fort ross road we do coleman valley willow creek bay hill road we're climbing through Marin, we're down into Tomales, we stop for lunch, we get these great sandwiches, we make it to Point Ray Station, and then we go up Mount Vision, which mm -hmm. was the next really kind of big climb before we drop down to back down to Highway 1, and then we go to uh, Five, what was it called? Five, five Brooks. Five Brooks Trail, mm -hmm. which was a surprise to me. I had not <laughs> planned for that. And in fact, when we got to Point Ray Station, I was starting to feel excited that we were almost done. Uh oh. And we had we had to do Mount Vision still, Five Brooks, Bolinas, uh, Ridge. Bofax Road, mm -hmm. Bolinas Ridge, and then from there we still had to ride all the way back to your house. So I'm going to fast forward all the way till we get to the top of Bofax where the sun is setting. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get dark. And I'm like, okay, here's where we're going to be riding Bofax at night, you know, in the dark, which is fine. We get our lights out. And you said, my. Uh, Headlight. You, yeah. You you said that, uh, I said, oh, my battery is on my phone's getting low. Can I have the auxiliary battery back so I can charge it up? And you you pulled it out and you said, uh-oh, I, I think it's dead. But it's okay. Like you were able to charge up your Garmin. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, let me try it. And I, you know, I tried to get a little bit of charge out of it. And it uh, looks like it did. And my phone died. So we were somewhere on Bolinas Ridge when my phone died. And uh, then your headlight died on your on your bike, and actually right before that we were we were riding along, and remember what happened was I was going behind you, and you know I don't know where this stick came from, but somehow I got this fairly large stick. I was probably at least an My inch in diameter. My happened is is three steps on that one. We rode through this top slippery kind of like. Uh, the water drained and left some kind of slicky stuff over there. Mm -hmm. And my bike starts swinging because I came in so fast in it, but I was able to control it. Yeah. And then you came through. Yeah. And then you 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 hit something. Uh, mm -hmm. And I asked you that, are you okay? And you said yes. And then we kept riding. And the next episode was when your crashing happens. Yeah, so I'm riding along, and I don't know where, out of nowhere, you know, it's fairly, it's pretty dark, because we're under the trees, so mm -hmm. the moon hasn't quite come up yet, the sun is set, and we're under the trees, so it's really dark in there. Well, the moon came out, the trees were just way too tall to allow the moon to supervise It was still us. quite, at that point, the moon was still really low in the sky. Okay. And we didn't have very, you know, it wasn't really bright. So all of a sudden, this something comes, I don't know, a stick ends up in my spoke and it hits either the, I think it hits the, the stay on my fender mm -hmm. and it really just stops the front tire and I just literally go straight over the handlebars and I'm like rolling, I'm like, oh shit. And I'm rolling over on, and you, you can't see me because my headlight is now pointing to the ground. And also because you're not pedaling, it's not bright enough. Yeah, it's not bright enough. And you're ahead of me, so you have to stop to figure out what just happened. I get myself back up. I need some light to see like what happened to the bike because I can't even see the bike. I'm looking around. What what happened? Like what actually? I couldn't at first. Didn't even know what happened. And then I, then I figured out it was stick my right light in there. To see oh, what man. is going on mm -hmm. and there was this big stick stuck into your wheel into yeah. the fender <laughs> so we got while we were there you decided to go ahead and switch out your headlight mm -hmm. with the spare headlight you open up your your saddle bag and I'm, i've been wondering what you've been carrying because you got this giant saddle bag but you don't have a sleeping bag you don't have a tent I've but you have i've packed it with food 
with tools and anything that you know i don't need but will need it if i don't bring it mm -hmm. they were all stashing there and what i did is uh, to bring the whole safe way with me that way the bags in front are closer to me i can easily reach so if i run out here i will transfer from the back to the front yeah. so that was uh so you open up that bag and i see like three or four headlights come out and i was like wow i guess we're covered <laughs> we got enough headlights to get them <laughs> there will be no shortage of headlights we don't have enough batteries to run the garmin or the rear derailleur if we die but we got headlights yeah but the good news was that i wouldn't have anything to show for if my garmin has died yeah I know. The That's bad, why we had to keep it charged. Yeah, the bad news is uh, there's um, some interesting footage that we could have had, like right after you crash and a mile f uh, to the finish. Yeah. I'm riding in the very narrow and steep kind of trail that yeah. have walls and my front wheel. Yeah, you're up. like in a rut. Exactly. We're riding on Bolinas Ridge and it has ruts like mm -hmm. from tire tracks riding through so if you make any little maneuver wrong you go up on the side and then you just it just flips you and over. and that's what happens the, my my bike just threw mm -hmm. me away mm -hmm. like a rock dog yeah so we were literally like a mile from or half a mile from the finish exactly. from the official finish but we still had to ride home to your house but we were about a half a mile from finishing the actual ride and you crash right in front of me that was... i see you going down and all of a sudden, I'm just, I cannot believe I'm seeing you crashing right now. Because you're falling straight for your shoulder. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh no, collarbone, right? And then your hip. And you hit the ground and I'm like, oh, Sally, are you all right? And you just don't even, like without any kind of, you know, hesitation, you just get back up. You lift your bike up. <laughs> you, you're like, I hope I didn't bend the derailleur hanger. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, it looks straight. And then you get back on the bike and, you know, we just carefully <laughs> rode to the end of Bolinas Ridge. We have a couple gates to go through. Mm -hmm. And then we get there and then we ride the, re you know, when we finish, it was kind of like uneventful. Like these, I, I guess, as all these things are, you know, there's exactly. no, there's not a crowd of people sitting there cheering us on, you know, but it was just you and I as like, this, the moon was out. It was actually a full moon. We're standing there at the intersection of Molinas Ridge and Sir Francis Drake. There's no one out there but us. By you and I, and I look at the moon and I'm like, Jeremy, I cannot believe you did it. I, I, I'm at the finish line. Yeah. That was... Uh, How did that feel? Just getting to the end, finishing it. Did you ever think you weren't going to finish it? Yes, but I never thought that I would see the, the finish line though. You did. You didn't think you were actually. I right? have. A, 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 I never doubt myself that I will do the whole four hundred and ten miles. I just didn't know that that particular time that we were at the finish line, I'll be looking at the finish line. Yeah, it just seemed like something that would. It was just like something that wasn't ever gonna come. It was just gonna take for so. <laughs> it long. was something that I never have a picture of in my mind. Okay. Because my yeah. <clears throat> my goal was to ride the mega hopper but not to get to the finish line i don't know if that makes sense yeah yeah no it does because if i'm if i'm thinking about the finish line the rest of it is agony it will be like when am i getting to the finish line yeah so yeah yeah so then from there we had to finish the last uh, i think it was about 15 miles to get to that your house. was one of my hardest flat ride ever do you know that i pedal from the finish to white hill non-stop yeah me too uh, you know the reason why <clears throat> it's a slight uphill actually it's not because it is uphill if i don't pedal i will get cold oh yeah Again, when i did yep. not want that last the only way to stay warm was mm -hmm. to go at it as much as I can. Yeah. And yeah. I think that even though I was going home, that took so much out of me than riding the climbs. Really? That last oh, yeah. 15 miles? Because I have to stay warm. Yeah. And by then, I was all like, 
we were wet. Yeah. So what um, what would you do different next time now that you've done this? Um, the, it will make sense to do the same thing again. That means you're going to get a, the same experience that you've already got. Right, but if you were to go back and change anything, I guess, like fix something you did. If I will go back, I will find, I will try and find a situation that I have somebody driving with me with, uh, I can get warm coffee. So you'd want like support, basically. Support. More support. Okay. Um, I will now, have... would, do you think if you had more support, like a vehicle, like you said, following you, carrying mm -hmm. your stuff, would you have done it? You know, you, would you have ever, would you have even have slept? Would you just try to ride the whole thing? I, I would try to ride it without sleeping. Okay. Yeah. And I strongly believe that I can do that. Yeah. Because um, <clears throat> with the exception of the first day, um, <clears throat> I pretty much ride till either late into towards the midnight. Mm -hmm. You know, and when the night comes for me, it's just you're good. Another, right there. I, it's it's another day at the office. Okay. What about on the bike itself? Was there anything you would change? I mean, obviously your battery died, so not much you could do there, I guess. Just you had the extra battery. The only thing I would do different is bring extra or bring big pack of auxiliary battery. Okay. But outside that. So you liked your equipment. Yeah, I like my the equipment. Headlights were I good. like the set, set the, the setup. Mm -hmm. I will bring more on tap. On tap, which is yeah. the maple syrup. Maple syrup. Okay. That probably mm. is Yeah, food. What like what was your what were you consuming on this ride? Um, Aside from the sandwich, which we know saved the day. Yeah. But before all of that, what were you eating? Did you eat any? Did you have any other meals besides bike food? Uh, I, the, my bike food was Joji bars, and then on top, beside that, and until we got to the sandwich. No, the only you thing, I, the only thing I do is when I'm, um, at uh, Cloverdale. Yeah, in Cloverdale. I, I had oatmeal when I woke up. Okay. What did you have at night? Nothing? Just snack? Snack? Yeah. Night, oh, Brennan ordered uh, some uh, um, burritos. Burritos. Okay. Yeah. So you got burritos in Cloverdale. Yep. And then oatmeal, you had a breakfast. Okay. Yep. Yeah, good. And then uh, 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 at uh, St. Helena, I uh, stop at the store and get uh, kind of like. Soda drink, a soda drink. Yeah, that that's was it. <laughs> okay, so you're eating like maple syrup mm -hmm. and Joji, Jojo, Joji, jo Joji bars, Joji bars, yeah. and uh, consuming that. And then okay, and then the last day when we rode, we were basically yeah same thing. We mm -hmm. we stopped. We got some. We got a couple bananas and Jenner. We brought some food, some bars, and then we got that big sandwich at the exactly. Tamales Bakery. And then from there, I was full. That that sandwich filled me up so much. I was not hungry. I could not eat anything until we got to the top of Bofax. That's how full I was. Best sandwich. But as ever. soon as we got to the top of Bofax, oh yeah, I immediately felt hungry. It was yeah. like it was like a switch. Something turned on. Remember, it was like I oh told, my gosh, I'm so hungry. Remember, I told you to have to stop for a second. Mm -hmm. And when I bought those. Um, Naked drinks in uh, Point Reyes. Yes. Yeah, you bought those. You know, too. I knew that because I don't want to have to go through a process that I'm eating the bars and the gels and my system is not working anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, hey. And I told you precisely that at the top of um, Mount Vision, I'm going to drink one. Yeah. At the bottom of both eyes, I'm going to drink one. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, drink one on the way down to, um, uh, what is it called? Bolinas Ridge. And that's what happens. Because, yeah. I, I, you know, I did, I, I, I've done these stupid things to a point that I pretty much have an idea what my body will do. Yeah. I mean, so, this isn't your first long, hard ride.
but this is your first multi-day mm -hmm. where you stitch together these big huge rides so like right now you know up until this point you know you've done i've watched your strava i know how many long rides and incre incredible uh challenging climbing rides you've done in marin where you ride all of the climbs in mount tam and you end up with thirty thousand feet of elevation and you know i've seen that so this isn't like the first time you've pushed yourself to that limit i just want to make sure people don't think that you just rolled in and did this off the couch kind of thing this was you you've been riding a very long time you've conditioned Even, yourself for a very long time to be able to do this um, recently i did a um, couple of rides that i go con like day after day doing 10,000 feet towards this ride oh okay and from your house so you from my house do multiple long rides exactly okay. either do it away from mountain and do mountain so that two days in a row yeah at least i've ridden 10,000 feet. Yeah, so you know what it feels like to get back up the next exactly. day when you're sore from the day before and start riding again. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's a really hard place to imagine yourself. Like after you've done a really long ride one day, wake up in the morning and then try to imagine redoing that again. I mean, if, if you look at this ride, 46,000 feet elevation. The first day I've done, let's say, 18,000 feet. The second day, even if I do 15,000 feet the second day, I still have a lot to do. Yeah. So that means I've done uh, a minimum of uh, 12,000 feet riding every single day. Yeah. Yeah, I think our last day, although my... my uh... I think you and I have done more than 14,000 feet. I think it was a little over 14. Because mm -hmm. what I did actually record was 13.5. So... And we still had quite a bit more. And remember all the time that... So when Brennan recalibrated the route for me, yeah, he only I don't, I, I, he didn't even get to, you know, I don't think he had a, like the route he he had four thousand, hey forty four thousand. I don't think so. No, it was it at was, forty, and then somehow you ended up with forty five thousand. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. the the thing is, is that sometimes the. The mapping, uh, like the mapping tools that are online to map your ride or whatever, or ride with you. And also, too, during the ride, sometimes I will take a route because the the map is telling me, and then I will be the wrong. I way. will I will go the wrong way, and then to tell me yeah. that of course, like yeah. I did this one long descent that I was feeling really good, and all of a sudden. Beep, beep, and he said, of course. And I'm oh, like, of no. course, this computer is so full of it. Yeah. But. Isn't that interesting? I've noticed that with the with these uh, these GPS devices and like mapping. Is a lot of times it'll tell you you're off course. But, but you are but on you're course. you're not. But this is the trick. And then when you're on course, it said that you're, and when you're off course, it tells you you're on course. And so you're riding along thinking you're on the course. And then all not. of a sudden it cal calculates it. And it can be because the the satellites right. it, it's, may yep. not be in a good position from where you are. And it can't be, you're not, it's not a very accurate reading and that this, happens. And this is the beauty of having Brennan being part of this. When he recalibrated the course, he, instead of Mega Hopper, he tapped it. Sally Mega Hapa. So when yeah, I'm cause... off course, if you say, oh, I'm off course, I ignore it. But if you say Sally Mega Hapa, off course, then I know that I'm really off course. So I have to okay. come back to course. So I have the Sally Mega Hapa to guide me. Sometimes by the time I, I, that shows up, I have to do some climbs back. Oh, so it, it, it's not like, this ride, if the GPS has, if we didn't, I didn't lose power, Miguel would have seen the extra that I've done. And I'm actually very happy because normally I'm not good in following directions, but for some reason, all the, you know, the off track, finding my way back, you know, all that is what accumulated to make it, uh, uh, 46,000 feet elevation and I really wrote those right. <laughs> I didn't make them up no, no, sometimes yeah. I'm following the distance 
uh, the, 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 the route, mm-hmm. have fun descent only to find out that, ouch, this is going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to hurt going back up that climb. Exactly. Yeah. But, and even when Brennan did the route, it was only 445 miles, mm-hmm. but I ended up with 555. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's all good. And if I have a support, all that could have been prevented, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, that's part of the whole fun of it yeah. is navigating, you know, doing mm-hmm. it yourself, navigating, yeah. finding food along the way, mm-hmm. water. Did you, yeah, did you ever have any problems with, like finding water? Or food oh, yeah, or? I did have, um, after I talked to you uh, while I was in St. Helena, mm-hmm. and then uh, I, after drinking soda and then start to ride off, I didn't check my water. When I rode off and I started to climb, I realized that, oops. You're out of water. All my three bottles. This is Spring Mountain. Yeah, Yeah. we're done. So my goal was keep riding. Do you have something on fire? Or is the water that is? Oh, that's just the yeah. Yeah. pot on the So as I'm riding, I said to myself that, you know, there's no shame in seeking help. If I see anybody... I will just kindly ask them if I can feel water from their house. Oh, yeah. I didn't see anybody, but I kept riding, seeing people, and all of a sudden I'm seeing horses, and I'm like, you know what? There could be uh, uh, (laughs) blessings in disguise. Uh And then I'm riding past one horse, you know, uh, how do you call it? Uh, stable horse stable Mm -hmm. and then finally i run into one at a cave and i i i i I look at the horses uh three horses one in the shade and one right by the gate Mm -hmm. and then i look at the gate and there's a a a a tap outside with a horse on it stretch out and i'm like whoo so i stop pull aside you know take the horse out and then fill all the water bottle and then put down the hose back the, on. The, no, put one mix on one bottle that I will need immediately and then put, put the hose back on. And as I was about to finish putting the hose back on, the horse went, <gasps> and I'm like, oh yeah, snitches get stitches. You don't uh, snitch on. <laughs> snitches get stitches. <laughs> and then I, 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 it was so like kind of funny. I'm like, if anybody hear me right now, they will think that I'm going crazy. You're going I'm, talking, crazy. I'm talking to the horse. Because the horse didn't say nothing when I stop and then I went and I take the hose off and put the water. But as soon as I put the hose back and turn the water off, it went, hey! And I'm like, oh, snitches get stitches. Busted. <laughs> exactly. Then the rancher run out. Hey, <laughs> uh, what well, are you the doing? wasn't there, so but it was yeah. kind of, it's one of uh, the highlight of the ride. Like, I mean. Did you have any, like, did you did you meet anybody along the way? Did you have any you know? interactions with people no. other than the Beside, dog walkers? Other, other than the dog walkers and the, yeah. the other guy called me crazy and then those yeah. ladies cheering me up. It's like it's the a good, pretty remote ride for the exactly. most part. Exactly. It's like the good, the bad, the ugly. The only, t- one of the things I will point out is that it's so much safe. And I appreciate the realization and the acknowledgement of people over there yeah. when you are on your bike yeah most people are very people give me space yeah beside the and it's kind of weird how it happened i just get called crazy and the next but in a good way i think uh, yeah i think so yeah. he's he's trying he's to say he's exactly teasing. he's trying to say that nobody no normal person that this right and then run into another guy who wants to make sandwich out of me and right. then get right. running into well, ladies. It's yeah. always the ladies. Yeah. You know, that makes you oh. know that, hey, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, I mean, if you are in the, in the world out there, you know, the world is not a bad place. There no, are still isn't. so much good yeah. kindness and, and uh, people who don't know you look after you, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's just a, I mean, I think people when they, you know, as a cyclist, a ride, bike rider, a, you know, whatever you want to call us, mm-hmm. you know, we get, we do sometimes get treated like, you know, second class citizens out there. But I think most of the time it's just people are having a bad day, 
you know, they had their boss get mad at them yep. and, you know, maybe their kids are going through something or they're dealing with a medical issue. There's always a reason for it's people's what, aggression. Yeah. And so I try it every time I try, awesome. I try hard to just put myself in a situation where I say, well, I've had a bad day too. And, you know, they're just, they're just venting on me because I'm an easy target. Exactly. But, or people are jacked up. More? No, I'm good. Thank you. Or people are just jacked up in medication. <laughs> you know, oh, that's, that's also too. true. And they're distracted. <laughs> they're, they're looking at their cell phone or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it's not worth getting frustrated. I mean, we get frustrated. It's hard not I to. I mean, it yeah. is part of what it's makes us it, humans, yeah. right? You know, you cannot be mm -hmm. absolute. But then you get those people who are so generous and so exactly. nice and give you so much room. And it kind of like, it helps to sort of even things out, mm -hmm. you know. And, and then I sometimes really you run that. into people, they, 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 they want to understand mm -hmm. your situation. They, some people are actually very curious. They want to see what drives you, you yeah. know. Yeah, like why would you want to do that? Exactly. Why the hell are but, you But you here? see, that's the beauty of it. And then because... The brain is a brain, but what can you, what you can do with it or what you do with it is what makes it uh, different from somebody else's brain, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, uh, for example, like until this last Sunday, like I, I will forever have different appreciation for sandwich, you know? <laughs> Oh, honestly, yeah. like when I'm eating sandwich, my thing is to have belly full. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond that. But you don't know until you put yourself in the circumstances mm -hmm. that you know that, you know what? It's, it's egg, but it could be more than the egg. Yeah. You know, yeah. and not only we were full, it provided us with energy. Oh, yeah. And then, I mean, after that, it's like, I felt like we were possessed. I mean, we were hauling right after oh, yeah. the sandwich. Oh, yeah. And I'm even... I mean, I went up Mount Vision. I was feeling great. I mean, did you, I, I, even I told you, I said to you that, Jeremy, this is not the Mount Vision that everybody knows. Didn't yeah. I tell you? Yeah. So it comes back to the element that was stashed against me is the same element that makes it possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah, my vision and, was great. And, and that the descent off my oh. vision was great. That the trails this, and stuff. The same thing that. goes with life. Is somebody would say life is hard. Yeah. I, I, at what at what lens? The, <clears throat> we can be going through the same thing. But because I'm looking at it from my lens, I might not be seeing a hard life, and you'll be seeing a life, hard life. So it's all based on the lens you're looking at it. You know, life is not designed to be hard. It's not designed to be easy at, at the same time. So you do yourself a favor and just take it easy. Mm -hmm. So, and here we are. Well, now that you've finished this, <clears throat> have you... Already started oh, yeah. figuring out what your next. No, no, I've already started figuring out. I, this was just one of the things I've been, you know, hoping and wishing and planning I can do. Uh, the other couple, the other ones I'm, I'm putting in line. I don't know which one will come first, but hopefully soon, uh, I have to get back and then uh, see when Brennan has some time or downtime and he will help me do some like a uh, route planning but i want to do the three kings is that what it's called three kings yeah uh mount tem okay mount diablo and mount hamilton connect all of oh, them oh wow yeah all in one ride all in one ride how how far do you think that is total I, Thing, probably about 300 that i can do in one day you're gonna do that in one day yeah oh that would be great so wow. the bike is the problem um yeah as i told you i'm in the process of having a, a mosaic design me a new road wow, bike wow really frame. yeah so we've already you got another about. bike in the works yeah so you had yeah for everyone out there wants to know a little bit about your bike so you had a custom made 
mosaic cycles is that in they're in colorado yes yeah in colorado okay and they custom made this bike for you purposely the, the, the for... geometry everything is just that one bike and okay. the color scheme brennan and i put our heads together so they even dab it grasshopper green grasshopper green is yep. the color of your bike yeah so that's what i actually want to call it just yeah. because i think that that is so fitting yeah and before the bike was built i we i told brandon that i want a bike that is going to be all purpose grasshopper where the road the gravel yeah kind of a mixture just, of exactly like so they of they build it in such a way that it can, i can take 48 so right now okay. it's 48 what's yeah. the new bike you're working on so what's the new one? bike is going to be the uh r is it r1 yeah r1 yeah r1 is like that i don't top actually know much bike. about mosaic so yeah yeah so, so it's and, a, r1 is there kind of like a a standard frame they build or, um or? it's just like yeah top mm, of the mm. end road it's a top frame. end it's a road bike frame mm -hmm. okay and what tire clearance will that have so I think they do, I don't know if it is 28 or 28 or 30, 30. 32, I, okay. but I'm requesting a clearance of 35. Oh, 35. So okay. I've already gotten a feedback that they said they can, they will, they can do good, that for me. I think that's a good size tire for a road bike. Yeah. No, I'm, 32, I'm not going nice. to use 35, but if I want to, like... Yeah. If this one didn't have the clearance, I wouldn't be able to use 44. Right. So. Yeah, having a little extra clearance is good, even if you're not going to use exactly. it. Exactly. Um, and, yeah. and I have a, a great color scheme that will come with that, so I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, well, I'll be really excited to see what this looks like. So, now. Is it level top tube or slope? I, I like the level top tube. You like tube. the level top mm -hmm. tube, okay. Um, I got my, uh, seven yeah. back there it's got the it's a slight there's actually a slight uh slope in that top tube but it's mostly yeah level. at the back i don't know why i'm i'm so much falling in love with the level top tube yeah it's just classic there's something about it it gives you some rigidity yeah mm -hmm. yeah your bike looks like it's got some fairly large diameter tube mm -hmm. too so your bike looks pretty rigid how tall are you I am uh, six two six in between two. six two six three okay and how much do you weigh uh, 150. 150. That's my salami Ooh. weight. I weigh more than you do. And I'm, I'm two inches shorter. That's I was wondering why you were climbing so strong on that bike. Because you have a lot of gear on there and stuff. And you're just, uh, you're flying. After doing all that climbing, you're still going up the climbs. And I'm breathing hard thinking, isn't he going to get tired soon? When does he get tired on this ride today? And yet, just like a steam engine but if it was short ride uh, you probably would have let me go on a long time mm. you would have spat me out well you have a lot of stuff you're carrying a lot of stuff on your bike so you know that adds a lot of uh, that slows you down and then the next ride the other ride is uh, yeah what's the next ride i've been <clears throat> talking to brennan about it i want to do marine 40. marine 40. yeah the shortest i don't have to get 300 miles i don't have to get 400 miles the shortest possible mile that i can get to come out with at least forty thousand feet elevation okay so you're so, gonna do forty thousand feet of climbing mm -hmm. in the shortest distance possible yes in marine county in marine i and don't have paved to mile. or unpaved gravel all gravel all gravel all or well some yeah mix Depending, even if it is mixed, the pace should be less than one percent. Okay. And what bike would you use for that? Um, the new one that you have. I can use. Or? I can use uh, that. I can use the the gravel bike with knobs, or I can use. Uh, I can do a uh, Brennan. Uh, uh, he he's not riding mosaic anymore, but I'm planning on getting his mosaic mountain bike oh he has a mosaic mountain bike yeah nice. they used to sponsor him because he's sponsored now by Pinero. yeah okay. and then build a full rigid and use that one. Ah, and cool. then the third challenge is actually third and fourth i'm going to do i did 10 7 for thirty thousand feet and after miguel and i talk miguel said there were one 
clients that I didn't do. So that would make it term nine. Now I've recalibrated all, so it will be 11 term clients. So I will try and do all the 11 term clients. Oh, I remember the question I wanted to ask you. I don't want to forget. This is, so you were riding most, a lot of this by yourself. There were parts mm -hmm. you were riding with Brennan, parts of you riding with me, but was there ever a point in time mm -hmm. at night or whenever that you were afraid or scared? No, I've never been. Never scared. Never scared. Not, you don't have any thoughts no, in your mind? Like, doesn't. what was that thing I just saw moving over there in the shadows? You have to understand that uh, night riding for me is like being home. I'm more scared of riding during daytime than during night. Like when I'm riding in the night, my 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 um, my mindset is, uh, do you know? Have you ever witnessed people in temple? Um, so what they do is in the temple. No. Yeah, they sit, and then it's almost like everything is blank, like. Everything is sheltered. They are protected within that. Uh, um, within as long as they are inside that temple, nothing bad can happen. Okay. When I'm riding in the uh, night, I see. when I'm riding in the night, that's what I get. Yeah. Like I feel, I feel like I'm in the egg, mm -hmm. egg, and then like you, you open egg, you empty the uh, the yolk and then uh, the white. And then mm -hmm. put me inside and then cover it. I'm shielded. So that's okay. what night riding does for me. Oh, that's okay. why I, even by myself, I prefer living in the dark uh -huh. and then make sure that I come before noon. Okay. Yeah. So you oh, normally ride at night then? Exactly. Like uh -huh. this situation, if I was familiar with this, the route here, yeah. <coughs> I can. I, I I will attempt doing this one big haul, you know. Daytime, when I'm riding daytime, I get tired. And that will explain to you why when I'm racing the first couple of miles, I'm out because I don't have that energy. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, night, I've never ride scared in the night. And then the... the, the the night, the more night I ride, the more confident and comfortable I get. Wow. So during this ride, when I finish it in the night, you watch um, towards the end of the ride, I was a lot more stronger in compared to the beginning. Uh, the beginning and the middle of it. And yeah. every day is like that. I yeah. get stronger when the evening approaches. Yeah. I can't explain it. You yeah, know, you just thrive in the it, night. I just thrive in the night. The night is for me is like is is a blessing, and I will be involved in a lot of cycling events if they can like um, terrible the, two. Yeah, I don't have problem with terrible two. The only problem I have is start around their time. It's me eating the peanut good for this. <laughs> yeah, I know. When, you, when we brought the peanuts, and started eating. I was like, uh oh, this might be a bad idea. All right, Sally. Well, um, I guess uh, so night riding is your thing. And, you know, you're really cut out for this. I think you're really cut out for this type of riding. I've known you for a really long time. And, you know, we tried, we tried racing together. We tried road racing. We tried all that stuff. But I think... You know, ultimately, you know, you and I both we're we're not really good at short, fast Chasing racing. People are, uh, but one thing you point. have that Temple. a lot of people don't is just this mental determination. And I really think that you would be an ex like this just shows how good I think you would be at these ultra distance uh, bikepacking events. You know, not being being out in nature all by yourself, no problem riding through the night no problem dealing with adverse conditions uh in the night you know that stuff just drives me crazy I, getting a flat tire at night is is to me the worst nice. thing ever i hate that and it's just a flat tire but you know at nighttime it makes it 10 times worse yes, it seems that's like that's true but uh you seem to handle this stuff you know when you were changing your headlights and you know, you were <laughs> not bothered by it at all. You were just that's, that well, that's get... true. But at the same time, you know, I feel like um, I have so much weakness, and then uh, 
I'm I'm learning, you know. I t- but this is such a big, big learning experience for me. You know, like um, just having you. I know you probably don't think that is that much, but having you refasting my backpack stuff for me is huge because I was able to go back and do it and do it so much to a point that at the, uh, after the uh, declating climb, I was descending and I'm like, oh my God. Like one of the uh, people said that this is an adventure that all the right pieces have to fall in place. If I didn't know how to do it then, you know, but you you have to be, you have to allow your curiosity to, you know, take a front row of whatever you do. And then don't, don't, don't be too, um, um, self-absorbed to ask for help you know i don't know that day i'm like oh what's jeremy jeremy i need help you know you Mm -hmm. have to ask for one it could be life it could make the difference or it could be a life and death situation if you don't so well congratulations sally on uh on doing this you are now one of three official finishers and uh it's a short list right now and but I'm sure uh the, the list will grow big i hope um you're inspiring a lot of people with what you did and i think you know we're going to see more people go out and do this and i will join if yeah. anybody is interested in doing it let me know i might be in the next group yeah you oh, do yeah. it again i'll do it again trust me you uh, probably okay. don't believe me no I'll, i believe you if you say you're gonna do it I that's the one do, thing i believe i will do it when again. sally says he's gonna do something yeah it he's he means it i will do it again yeah and wow. possibly i probably now that i've seen um the route and i've seen how everything handles yep um Mm. You know, I, it's you'll not, do it so it's much not faster of, next it's time. It's not official, but I might do this same backpacking again just to up your time or to no, up on my time you... just to you know make sure that uh, uh, certain things I've done through them, and then I check myself out. This yeah. was like a, a, a learning moment, yep. and then also. A moment of appreciation with everybody. This is like a, a, a teachable moment. Mm-hmm. I have you, I have Brennan, I have, you know, all the people following me. It's like people guide you. It's like it takes a village to raise a child. So this was like a, a, a community effort, yeah. you know. So I admire that, but I would love to get into a situation that everybody wakes up and I'm like, bang. Yeah. One more mega hopper down, mm. and people go, "What the hell?" I know. <laughs> you know. Wow! Congratulations, Sally. Thank you, Jeremy. And uh, thank you for doing this this interview. Thank you today. For... And I've got a bunch of, you know, video footage of the last day, and a little bit of the beginning of that first morning I ran into you. I'm going to try to overlay on some of this conversation, so yeah. people can kind of see what it looked like out there for you, and how comfortable you looked riding it which is another thing that just blows me away. You never once looked like you lost composure. And uh, yeah, so I'm very, very impressed and really excited and for you for being able to do this. I know when you said it, I was like, I know you can do it. And then there's just that anticipation yes. building up like, okay, when is it going to happen? Mm-hmm. And you know, and then all the stuff started happening that week. I thought, oh no, he's going to change it. He's going to change the date. Like there's no way he's going to go out in the rain. And then you just did it. Like, and uh, really and even that. when you called when you called me from Cloverdale, I was like, "Yeah, he's giving up." Nope, <laughs> nope, not at all. I mean, you were you were like, "What do you mean, come pick me up? I, how are you going to get me you're back not- here in the morning so I can start <laughs> up again?" I'm like, "Oh, you're not giving up? Okay, uh, well, you know." I was right at the trap. Yeah. I stop here, and I'm stopping yeah. right here. Mm. Um, 
So yeah. The, the interesting part of it is, you know, it's hard to comprehend. It's after I finished that I realized that, yeah, you know, I'm not sure if 100% was behind me that I got finished it. This thing is hard. Oh, yeah, it is. You know, but the Saturday, I wasn't getting a satellite communication system mm. back. Ted texted me on Saturday and said, Sally, the sun is almost up and you're looking good. Yeah. Keep at it. And then uh, when I got the Sunday, so uh, Monday, I got the, I saw the message on Monday and I texted him and I, that's when it hit began you. to hit me. Yeah. I did not, I'm like, eh. Yeah, another bike ride this time. Yeah. But when I got his message and I text him and I said, "Yep, yeah, it's a wrap. It's not as impressive as his, but well, I got it done." Hey, and then Ted I, has a lot more experience now. Exactly. He's uh, he's an experienced bike packer now. And then I gave him the numbers, and he's like, "Wow, those yeah. are some impressive numbers." And then yeah. he went legend. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so he's he stayed on communication with me pretty much most of the Monday. Mm. So that was cool. cool. Is and then Peter Statner too. Yeah. So that was it. all of them coming out. <laughs> what? Who is and this guy? Like, oh, oh. oh wow. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I don't put them. I don't put me at their level. No, of course not. You know. Yeah. But yeah. For me. They inspire me. Anytime I see them, anytime I can ride close to them, I feel like I'm heading towards the right direction. Yeah. And then, uh, like, to get to this point and having everybody giving you kudos, you yeah. feel like, yeah, you know what? Because they know how hard it is. Exactly. And they, and they can just imagine how, you know, the rest of the world doesn't quite get yeah, exactly. what you just did. And they do, and so they want you to know that there is people that recognize it. And and so many people inspired me in so many ways. I, I after listening to Miguel and, and uh, Yuri as well, mm -hmm. Yuri podcast, as well, yeah. And then they were talking about how they used to raise. And then Miguel used to yeah. put a dang on Yuri, and then he would be feeling good only to get to a yeah. point that he looks back and Yuri is coming with the whole yeah. train, and he's like, damn. And then in that, in, in that conversation, Yuri said that, <laughs> yep, you know, this thing you cannot let up. Yeah. And that's the phrase I took from that whole pod podcast. So when I'm writing, I, I'm always riding with Yuri. Never let up. It doesn't matter how fast I am. It doesn't matter how slow I am. If I'm grinding, uh -huh. my 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 chances are greater than I think. The odds of my chances are bigger than I think they are. You know. So like not having that foundation in cycling, but listening to all these seasoned riders. And another thing Miguel that said that I always walk with me is that cycling, you talk the talk, better make sure that you can walk the walk. <laughs> and well, that become a lesson to me that I would rather walk the walk and not talk so that when I'm talking, you will listen. Mm -hmm. You know, I will now walk. And, and if you look at all this great, Peter, um, Ted, uh, who, who, whoever is in our maze, they don't talk it. They just walk it. They just do it. You know, and then you wait for them to talk it because you're ready to listen. Right. So when Miguel said, yep, it's cycling. If you talk the talk, better make sure that you watch it. Yeah. If not, everybody will. Everybody's <laughs> watching. Yeah, for and sure. And then... That's why whenever I go out about... <laughs> If I were to go on a bike ride like that, I don't think I would tell anyone until it was over. I told Miguel, I said, Miguel, do you know the reason why I'm not giving you so much into my mega hopper plans? And he said, no. And I said, you put it out there and you will expose me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sally the fraud. 
exactly. in the cycling And crop. I'm like, I don't want to be exposed. <laughs> so the last minute that I let him know that this is the day I, I, I've started. Oh, before uh-huh. I know, my first ride, when it is on the it's you on know, Instagram. And I'm like, yeah. oh, the girl just sold me out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, he kept you honest. Yeah. So you can think it's like, that later. okay, now you have to finish if you don't finish. You have finish, to finish it. The that whole way. world knows that you are a quitter. Yep. Totally. Sally quit. Sally gave up. <laughs> oh man, quitting is the worst. Oh man. That is the worst. It's better you I would rather get sick start. and be put oh, in the it's hospital. It's better you don't start than get quit. Oh man. Oh, oh well. Yeah. Anyway. One of the good things was mentally my mind was ready. I didn't care the rest of my body as long as this was ready. Uh, I'm coming home. Yeah. So that was good. Yep. Nothing feels better than finishing. Exactly. It doesn't matter how hard it was or how slow you went. When, as long as you finish it, it's like uh, that's what... here. I'm eating some peanuts. <sighs> well, Sally, thank you very much. We are over two hours into this thing, and uh, it was really fun. I'm glad I got to join you for the last day and see you finish. Thank you again for doing this with me. My pleasure. Um, and uh, we'll be keeping in touch on your next adventures. Let's do it again sometime soon. Uh, yeah. Right on. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. That was great. I'm a... Woo. Gentlemen. Sally what finished. That was the hard one. Wow. All right. Congratulations, Sally. Do you know what the... Uh, Total mileage and climbing it uh, came out to? Um, uh, 453.9 miles. Yeah? Yep. 453.9 miles. miles. And how many? And elevation is 46,000 feet. 46,000 feet. Yep. And then uh, we'll have to get your total time, I guess. Yeah, uh, well, you'll have to figure that out. And now the time says uh, 57 hours, 26 minutes, but that's including the all-purpose time. That's the whole thing, 57 hours? Mm-hmm. So that's including all your stops? Everything, like even when I okay. leave the... the yeah, that's good. All overnight. Yeah, that's I'll, good. I will know. <laughs>